All right, another video exposing the papist heresies of Rich Pankowski, who, you know, I believe is a Jesuit coadjutor. There's a lot of evidence showing a lot of red flags, and he teaches numerous different Catholic doctrines that are straight out of the Catechism. I've shown that. I plan to do other videos showing where his doctrine is found in the Catechism. But one of the big heresies I'm going to show in a clip uh, I'll play is he denies that essentially Christ, basically, uh, in Roman Catholicism, salvation was not finished at the cross. Salvation is a continual process of, of keeping yourself saved by holiness. I've shown that in the Catechism. And Pankowski, of course, because in order for that to be true, that means that Christ did not forgive all sins at the cross. Future sins are not forgiven. You're going to see Pankowski peddle that same heresy, that Christ did not forgive all sins, that he says that it's a lie to say that your future sins are forgiven. Why? Because he's saving himself. He's keeping himself saved, just like any, any uh, papist would do. So the fact that he's bringing so many different Catholic types of doctrines into, you know, supposed Bible believing, and he's not even a King James Bible believer, he pushes the modern versions, another red flag, by the way, uh, but he preaches multiple different Catholic types of doctrines, his salvation is no different than that of a, of a Romanist. Why? Because you're keeping yourself saved, and if Christ forgave all your sins, then that wouldn't be possible, you know? So you're going to see that. Watch this clip where he, you know, flat out denies the scriptural fact that Christ forgives all sins. And by the way, too, in the Catechism, if you look at a paragraph, for example, 10, uh, 1033, teaches the exact same heresy. Other paragraphs of the Catholic Catechism, such as 1815 down to uh, 16, also uh, many numerous others. I've done other videos showing it. I could put some of it on the screen right now showing his uh, multiple different Catholic heresies. But what he's teaching is no different than what you hear from a Catholic priest regarding justification. Check this out. But, but your future sins are forgiven. You don't need to ask for forgiveness. What a lie. What a lie. But but your future sins are forgiven. You don't need to ask for forgiveness. What a lie. But but your future sins are forgiven. You don't need to ask for forgiveness. What a lie. But but your future sins are forgiven. You don't need to ask for forgiveness. What a lie. What a lie. Yeah, right there you have it. You know, it's a lie. You know, oh Christ forgave all your sins. What a lie. You know, no different than what you'd hear from a Catholic priest. You know, and, and that's just one of his numerous other Jesuit papal doctrines. But here's some scriptures that refute him, refute this heresy, this Romanist heresy that, you know, Christ didn't forgive all sins, only your past sins are forgiven. Guess why? He's working his way to heaven. But here's some scriptures that refute that. Uh, Acts chapter 13, verse 38 to 39. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that uh, through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. Simple enough. Colossians 2, verse 13 to 14. These are verses that uh, Pinkowski or other Jesuits won't touch with a 10-foot pole. It, it destroys their self-righteousness, was what I mean. Colossians 2, verse 13 to 14. And you, being dead in your sins and the circumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with, with, with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to, the, to his cross. See, Jesus Christ is who's providing your salvation. Jesus Christ is who saves you. He forgives your sins. You're not saving yourself or keeping yourself saved. But you see, if you're a papist, like Minkowski, then these verses are null and void, you know? You're because it contradicts the idea of saving yourself. If Christ forgave all your sins, then you're not saving yourself because Jesus Christ is who's providing your salvation. Makes a real problem for the Catholic system. Titus chapter 2, verse 13 to 14. Titus 2, verse 13 to 14. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. It's just plain plain scripture right there, all iniquity, you know, all trespasses, all things. First John chapter one verse seven to nine. First John one verse seven to nine. But if we walk, if, or sorry, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from only our past sins. No, it doesn't say that. Cleanseth us from all sin. And it says, verse 8, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, Hebrews 10, verse 17 to 18. Hebrews 10, verse... 17 to 18. 
and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Uh, verse 18, where, uh, sorry, now where remission of these is, so now where remission of, of the, there is, there is no more offering for sin. Not good at reading on a computer, but notice that I'll remember no more. There's no more offering for sin. See, if you're a, a born again, you know, saint, your salvation is finished at the cross. You know, it is finished. John 19, verse 30. But you see, if you're a works righteous papist like Minkowski, salvation was not finished at the cross. It's a continual process of keeping yourself saved, and you never really know. There is no assurance of salvation. You just, you know, have to abide in Christ and, you know, hope for the best. You know, Jesus Christ is who provides your salvation. You're not, you're not keeping yourself saved. That's ridiculous. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25. Isaiah 43, verse... 25 says I even I am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins you see God forgive you see the other problem with these works salvationists is they give the impression that sin is somehow more powerful than God's forgiveness you know that that basically your sin overrides the forgiveness of God or something like that now they won't outright come they won't come out outright say that but that's what that's really what the undertone is because you're sinning, you've lost your salvation. So you're having to now live holy to get that salvation back or something like that. It's all about you keeping yourself safe. It's all about your works. You know, they get lip service to salvation by grace through faith, but the really salvation's hinging on you keeping yourself saved. You know, hence why Pinkowski will be those guys in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23, who, you know, like I was saying earlier, you know, they come before God and say, didn't I do all these great things? You know, didn't I do all many, all these wonderful works in your name? Because the lost false, the, the false converts, you know, and, and as an atheist, I, that's how I thought as well. You know, I was like, if there's a God, then, you know, I'll just, you know, do good and whatever else. And, and you know, it sounds cliche, but that is what I believed when I was a lost atheist. You know, these guys come before God and you notice the false prophets, they're like, didn't I do all these wonderful works? See, they're boasting about what they did. Is that not what Minkowski would do? You know, he thinks he's going to heaven because, you know, I'm living holy. I'm keeping myself saved. That's the truth. Pinkowski is a, is a papist heretic. He teaches papist doctrine. And, you know, like I said, I believe he's a Jesuit coadjutor. And the red flags keep popping up. His bitterness is that of a Jesuit coadjutor. You know, it matches the, that throughout Catholic history. You know, the multiple different heresies that line up straight with Rome that are taught in the Jesuit Council of Trent. I mean, the red flags go on and on. His, his uh, vehement support of the new versions, his mocking of King James onlyism. He rejects dispensationalism. He's post trade, believes in all these, you know, fake signs and miracles. I mean, the red flags are endless. You know, that's why I believe he is a Jesuit coadjutor sent to, you know, basically stir up division. Also, he loves, you know, whenever he goes somewhere, he's always causing strife and division among truly born again saints. Another warning flag of a Jesuit. You can read their oath of unction. It commands them to do that. So I can definitively say I believe Rich Minkowski is a Jesuit coadjutor. And this papist heresy of his is just yet another red flag on the long list of red flags that pop up. So anyway, don't be deceived by the wicked devil. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.